When we are recording, it's not good if you play the radio, but you are our, our own radio. Yeah, I can change the track. Would you like something else? I can yep, play something next. more kind of like... Next! <laughs> How's this? See us talk. The English vlogs are back, but this is for my local people because this week there is startup safari in Budapest and I'm about to head to the airport and have some interview with two of our keynote speakers. I can't wait to meet them, but before we do, I thought I will show you the setup in the car because it will be a carpool karaoke. Let's check it out. So I have two GoPros going on there. Hopefully you see it. What is there? The other is up there. Here it is. You can see it. And I have two Sennheiser lavalier mics set up. The other is here. It will record. I really hope the sound will be good. I never done anything like before, so I'm super excited to do so. So let's go to the airport and meet the others. So here is everyone. Okay, Jurgis, Singh. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Tanya and Balaj, my hey. homie. Okay, let's get in. Let's get started. All right. All right. So welcome to Budapest, guys. Thank you. I love that these memes, like short videos, came out. Like Zuckerberg explains how the internet works. Exactly. Yeah, it's too it's like, bad. You know, how do you make money? It's like we run ads, but everyone knows uh, that already. So you know, I thought it was a little bit um, poor planning on, on on their part. So, for example, now in Europe we have this thing called GDPR, which basically is the European Union's initiative to be more protective about the data and also how uh, companies handle it. Sure. Um, how is it going on with the states? And now I, I know it's a hot topic. Remember when you first got iTunes and you had to just click accept after scrolling oh, about yeah. 30 times? <laughs> And you said, what if I don't want to click accept? And there wasn't the option. Of course, you so cannot use you know, it. Then. You just can't use it. Yeah. And so I think we're at the point now where people want to negotiate those terms. For, for startups, it's, it's, I think it's very hard because uh, they sometimes if they are B2B or even B2C, they rely on these large providers handling the data, like Facebook's all Absolutely. ecosystem and stuff like that. So from a startup's perspective, how, how should they treat this topic? Well, I think it will probably also have to do with permissions, right? And some people are aware that they're giving these permissions to apps. When you know, when you sign in with a third-party app on Facebook, it says, do you allow for them to access your data? So I'm pretty aware of that when I click yes and I click no to certain apps. Um, I think they'll have to do a better job of making sure the end user is aware about the permissions. So... Startups will probably have to craft like the UX around it. Exactly, and they should educate the people and also the corporations they work together that, hey, you should be transparent, telling your users what, why do you need their data and what are you going to do with it. Exactly. I think the curious thing with the, with the Cambridge Analytica scandal is that people only now are kind of like broadly realizing that their data is being peddled, you know, and, and really wondering, ah, so this is Facebook's business model. Uh, it's kind of like a little bit that you know how Bitcoin made people understand that money to a great extent is just is fictional you know since the moment we moved on to fiat currency it's just basically all based on on faith you know and again people don't really read the terms of service you know they're Never. just like yeah 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 Never. whatever and when you have these kinds of incidents which have very large repercussions and only then do people that kind of question and say ah wait we need to we need to give more attention. Absolutely. Like all my friends are saying, "Hey, did you hear about the scandal?" And I'm like, "What did you think Facebook did?" I said you the know? same I, thing. I said, "Are people just waking up today and know. pretending? Wait, yeah. Facebook has my information. You only post a photo every day and check into every place you go to. Yeah. So, what did you yeah. think? I think it comes down like it's all people who drive it, and." For us in this region, and maybe we could talk about this, all these candles seem so far. Well, also, like uh, last week or two weeks ago, there was this uh, girl uh, shooting at YouTube headquarters. Right, right. Like, we in Hungary, for example, we cannot imagine anything like this happening. Like, you know, this is the, the typical thing, like, it could happen to someone else, but not me. Mm -hmm. It's just too far, but it could happen here. It could happen anywhere. It could happen anywhere. I think it's, it's very interesting because at least in, I was in San Francisco last year and kind of the feeling I got was that everybody felt that uh, 
all this new technology was taking us somewhere, but they didn't know exactly where it was taking us. And it's like, we'll get there and then we'll ask questions when we get there and we'll fix the problem when we get there. Most of the country doesn't see it the same way that Silicon Valley sees the world. And they are afraid of technology and they don't want to share any information. They don't even have, you know, some places still don't have great access to internet, right? That is the reality. Um, and I was laughing when you said that, you know, a lot of Silicon Valley or San Francisco wants to kind of just build, build, build and not really figure out what the end destination is because that is so true. And I think that's kind of the message also being pushed from investors, right? Build, 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 because I want to see what exactly. the current success looks like. And then you can kind of take, you know, a step towards the future and then look back at where you right. were and we what the journey has been. We figure it out when we get there. Exactly. Um, yeah. That's kind of, was like Facebook's motto, right? Or one of their values, yeah. move fast and break They'll things. They'll break things, exactly. They've changed it now. With with the way it is with startups in general, where you're supposed to like uh, prove a concept really quick and then try to, you know, grow really fast. It's all about really, you know, making waves and, and reaching results and not really wondering where this is going to take us, you know? Um, can, can startups afford to really look forward or do they just need to be looking at the success and the bottom line and things like that? No, I think, I think the best founders always have a vision, right? They always uh -huh. have a vision from day one of where they see this company yeah. going and what the bigger picture is. And I think a lot of the pitches we hear sometimes might be pitching a year's timeline, but they say, in a year we'll accomplish X, Y, Z. Um, but down the line, here's what we hope to to accomplish. accomplish this is yeah. what success looks like on the greater scale for the company and you hear it a lot a lot of times especially because we're looking at a lot of early stage companies they don't have any traction related to their final goal but that's okay because I think as long as they know where they're going or what the direction is as an investor you understand that it's you know still step one and the road is, is not a straight line and, and it changes and that's why projections don't really even matter yeah. mm -hmm. I mean I think that changes depending on uh, the ecosystems you go to, but in the Valley, early stage startups that have projections, it's usually crap. <laughs> yeah. None of it's going to be true in a year. If you're in a market that you can access, you understand what the behavior looks like, target that first, right? I think a lot of people want to launch and want to launch in, you know, five, 10, 15 cities or countries. And then two, I don't think it's a bad thing to spend time in the Valley. To kind of get a sense of what the hustle feels like because I think that's mm -hmm. the number one thing that our international companies talk about is the amount of work you get done in a day the fact that founders don't want to leave the office and they want to continue working and they move at a much faster pace and there's a lot of camaraderie amongst the other founders in a certain cohort or in a group there is a very strong pay it forward culture so if you were to even just reach out to other founders maybe founders in a similar space or um, there are there are events every single day basically expand your network expand and, the and network use put the yourself out there you because put yourself out people there. it's yeah. it, the the relationship in the valley is not as transactional as you would expect people are willing to help without receiving something in return from you immediately or maybe ever which is hard to believe but it's true. It's, it's hard to believe because a not so many people do do it in here, and also I, like I live there, and I have like um, good experiences and bad experiences uh, on the other hand as well. Like they say they're gonna help you, but mm -hmm. then they never call you back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like how can you select quality people who you can trust or rely on, and uh, the rest from the rest? And this is you're saying is in San Francisco? Yeah. I think that's, that's a good point. I mean, it's general, not just there. But yeah, yeah. I think, I think make sure your interests are aligned. Mm -hmm. Make sure the people you're talking to are the right people. I think a lot of the times, even for investors, when startups say they're talking to investors and they're fundraising, well, are you talking to the right investors? Do they look at your region? Do they look at your vertical? Do they look at the stage of your company? Um, I'm loving the music, by the way. It's really giving us good vibes. <laughs> Try to do it in a very human way and without really particular interest. A lot of people, you know, will approach you saying, "Hey, I have this, I have this, I have that," and they just yap away about themselves. And I've also, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, I, I fall, I fall at fault with this. You know, like someone says, "What do you do?" And I talk for ten minutes straight. 
where I think really what you need to build is a human relationship because in many cases what you want to figure out is whether you like this person, whether you have enough in common, whether you want to do business All or about kind of learn something together and have a beer or like really find out about his kids or his family or if you're just doing it because you need something from them. And I think somewhere like in the subconscious people know when it's like interested uh, intentionally interested genuine in. or if it's just bullshit you know exactly uh, so what I usually do is I try to amass I think I think my strategy is amass as much social capital as possible without cashing in you know just amass it just make friends you know I for example say hey play a song for me sure I'll play a song for you because you can read all these kind of like books and like 10 tips to uh, you know like a schmooze a potential investor or something but I think <laughs> I think what you need to do is just develop the human uh, element you know that, that and don't be transactional have. as you said exactly. yeah don't be transactional be, be real get be to, human get to know people because you care about getting to know people yeah exactly I think I found that I've connected much more with like influential people just by a, you know through jokes mm -hmm. and you understand hey we have the same kind of sense of humor yeah rather than saying hey we have this really cool idea we could develop together I think I think as, as strange as it may sound it, something like music food or a sense of humor it can tell you so much more about a person than uh, his portfolio I started to meet a lot more interesting people and actually the people from the business became more interested in me because they said hey what you're doing is interesting and cool it's different it's different and uh, and for me it's just sincere and it's not forced it's like uh, it's, it, it's it's a role it I'm more comfortable playing than yeah. you know pretending that, that something has to go down this is your authentic self and I think you you found your your unique angle in the best possible way so maybe you guys could share some advice on how should someone find their true authentic self well, got some cool pair of glasses <laughs> these are this is my authentic self there yes you this go. is channeling the inner new york city tanya um yeah i think it's figuring out you know what do you think about when you're not working right i think a lot of founders say oh i need to build this business because they think it might make money and then that business might you know shut down close whatever it is and the next business they're working on stems from their side hobby that they had had you know it's like i actually really enjoyed writing and so now i'm a writer and they're publishing books and i can't tell you how many times I've seen that happen and it just seems so much more authentic. They're happy when they're talking about it. They're less stressed. So I think it's, you know, find what makes you feel energized when you're working and that's really going to be I think most aligned with your true self. Love it. Just just figure just, just pay attention to the signs. Exactly. Yeah, don't force it, right? Yeah. How about you? It's very important to listen to your heart. Mhm. Mm you can and sing it now. There is a good song for I that. I think it's important that people listen to their heart <laughs> because very often they are entrapped by the mind and the heart will lead you in very unexpected directions but very often you will feel better going down those avenues than listening to your mind and then having your mind explain to your heart why you went down this way. <laughs> I would say be a little bit more American and don't be shy about talking about what you're good at. I think that's something that we don't hear from a lot of our international founders. They might so have true. something that was an impressive accomplishment, but they're a little bit shy to talk about it. Here we say that I have an idea and I would like to do X and mm -hmm. Y. In the States, if, if that's not, not even an idea, you just no, talk about I'm, I'm doing, this, I'm yes. doing that. I'm doing it right now. It's not something I would do. And that's the mindset that we yeah. really have to learn. Yeah. Guys, I loved all the thoughts we are about to arrive. Great. So have a great time in Budapest. Thanks. Thanks for the good talk. And guys, check out Startup Safari. <laughs> bye. Bye bye. You should say see us talk. It's in Hungarian. Like, bye. See us talk. See us talk. Take it, 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 take it,